So let's see if this is now working. Oh, technology. It says it's waiting for me. So is it? It says it's streaming. Here we go. All right, I think that means I should be live. Hey, we're live. Okay, so welcome anybody who uh, watches the video. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, sorry for the confusion about the time and starting and all that. So you can see you are tuned into the uh, award-winning Dad of the Year 2018 uh, video stream. Um, Tonight, uh, I'm just I'm doing some work on a project and thought it would be another opportunity to come online and share <clears throat> what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, what the process is, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, hopefully help out um, anybody who's starting out that doesn't know the questions to ask or how to begin. So what I've got here is a page that I laid out the other day. So I'm working on something Oh, actually, let me start with this. Anybody who has seen my videos before or my channel, you probably have heard me talk about my comic book, M Squad. So fantastic news, um, M Squad uh, was fully funded by my Kickstarter campaign that we did. Um, and that it, it closed out um, in June, mid-June. And that has all completed. So all of the funds and everything have all the Kickstarter back, you know, behind the scenes stuff has all been done. And so now we're at the point of starting to um, put in print orders. So M Squad is going to be coming to you um, here in the next couple of months as we get those copies printed and sent out to you. So super excited about that. So this is a different project. This is something called The Just, and I've talked about it a little bit. I've had uh, some trailers on my on my channel and some, and you've seen me do some other uh, videos with these characters. So one of the things that we're doing for The Just is there's a lot of backstory to this. It's a, a story about a generational superhero team, a multi-generational superhero team. So there's a lot of backstory to it. So one of the things we thought, uh, myself and the writer, Terry Solo, what we thought we'd do is um, do an ash can. So for those who don't know, an ash can is a small, typically black and white printed, smaller than a normal comic book, kind of on real cheap paper, um, but a, a small booklet that shows maybe some prequel or some some uh, 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 what am I trying to say here some some scenes uh, give you a, a early look at some of the pages or designs or characters or something right um, and just to give you a, a flavor of what's coming out so what we've decided to do is we're going to do an ash can for the just we're going to do a five page sort of intro story. So it's original art, original story that won't be in the Just Number One. This leads up to the opening pages of the Just Number One. And it's gonna give you some background on what's happening and the character, one of the characters that we don't necessarily see a lot of to start with called the detective. Um, and so what I've got here is a page where this character is hunting down a lead on a mysterious villain and um so the first this is actually page two page one he's is a big splash page where he's leaping so here he's going to be landing and you can see right so the the body comes down he has a cape then he's running along the rooftop jumping between roofs jumping over stuff and then comes to the final scene where he's found um where he needs to go so i wanted to just quick talk about how i come up with this what the process is um and then do a little bit of work on the pencils for at least the uh, the first panel there. So um, I know I need to tell the story, and there's a lot of a lot of this is just I'm just getting from point A to point B. Really, this stuff in the middle are just cool shots to give you an idea of the 
or to give space for narration. This guy has an inner monologue going along of what he what's happening and stuff. So one from the the first page being a splash page, which a splash page is just one big picture, one one page, one picture. Then he and he's leaping in the air off a building. So here's the landing. So we've got the classic superhero landing. We knew we wanted to do that. And then so not much in the way of a background. It's, it's going to be really focused on figure and this landing. Then um, what I did was obviously I broke it into these three parts that are equal in spacing. So one of the things when you are doing storytelling in comics and you do um, sequential panels one after the other after the other that are the same size, that sort of indicates um, a beat of time, right? When you start... Um, changing up the panel sizes and the shapes and stuff that sometimes indicates more of a jump think of like a like in a movie or something where there's a cut there's a jump the camera moves from one scene to another you could do that with burying your panels but when you have one two three this kind of tells you this is minute 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 right um the other thing this figure is going to be bigger and then I have sort of a medium and a medium. So then what I needed to do was have variation. So I have a very small figure silhouetted against the moon as he's leaping between the buildings. And then here we see the back of him because I, we're going to see what he's looking at, which you probably can't see it on camera right now. It's a little light, but it's a it's a um, condemned building. It's a rooftop of a condemned building where with a skylight because he's eventually going to go and the next page he's going to um, repel down the skylight. So that's what I'm working with to start with. So that's the storytelling. That Now what I have to do is move the reader through this storytelling. So there's a couple of tricks and things you can do in order um, to help with that. So one is as the, yes, it's a classic superhero landing pose, uh, hand on the ground, knee on the ground, fist up in the air. But this arm is going to point towards this second panel to lead you to here. The cape is also coming down. Um, so even though he's jumping in the air, really the cape would all be up, right? Be blowing behind him. But by arcing it down like that, that helps, again, bring lines to bring the eye here, to bring it back down and work it down the page. He's running, so his cape is blowing behind him, and these lines are going to work to pull you to here and then his fist is coming across so that brings you over to here he's leaping from point a to point b and then now he's jumping across now this one theoretically i could change it and i could move the leg so that he's jumping this way but everything is moving storytelling is this way so we're going forward we're going across we're moving forward and i want that so it's okay for this leg to come down and sort of lead your eye to here. And then you see the building, which is the important part. He's found this abandoned or condemned building. And now you have him as a stationary point in the foreground. And of course, his thoughts in the narration. So it's so from a storytelling and how I'm moving your eye around the page, it should, you'd see the figure, your eye would go to here, across, down, and then here. So that's how I'm moving you through the page. Now, and this is page two. So across from it is another page that you can see. So not quite as important on this page for me at the last panel to have something really active over in this end over here to pull you to the next page because you can already see it. It's already laid out over here. So you're automatically going to go to because this is how we read you get to the bottom and you go to the top of the next page and you're going to start from there and that's where we'll have the figure repelling into the building and, and all that so that's um some of the tricks there let me um also go ahead and talk real quick um about materials for again anybody that hasn't watched any of my other videos or anybody um who's new to drawing comics Let's talk first about the paper. This is um, Strathmore pre-lined uh, Bristol board. It's 11 by 17. The inside area of the light blue lines is uh, 10 and a half by 15. 
and or 10 and a quarter by 15 i think and i you can i get these on pads of these on amazon you can order them from other manufacturers and stuff um there are things like there's a company called blue line pro there's a company called eon pro i've used both of those um um, this just happens to be quick and easy and, and, and fairly easy to get my hands on. Not the greatest paper. Um, it's not pure white. It has a little bit more tooth than I like, but it's going to do the job. And in the end, this is going to get scanned into a computer and then printed. So it, what it's on in, in this, as long as I can draw on it, that's all that really matters. Um, you can get some that have ruled marks on the side, things like that. I just, you know, go with this and, and obviously draw my own borders. Um, so that's the paper. Um, I've mentioned this as well. I like a smooth paper. So paper comes in um, typically like three surfaces. There's like a, a vellum surface, a smooth surface, and a plate surface. So the vellum surface usually is toothy think of like a sketch pad where if you took your pencil on the side and you colored it in um you'd see the the lines of the the fibers of the paper this one is a smooth it has a little bit of tooth so you can feel your tools drawing over the paper but it's not so bad that it grips or scratches as it goes across and that's important to me i want my tools to slide as I move around. Now, plate is coated with an even thicker coating on the top. Um, I, think it, I think it's like a clay almost um, that they use in the in the printing process and the paper creating process. I could be wrong, but that is like drawing. Um, like somebody actually, I heard somebody say the other day, it's almost like etching. When you draw, you're actually like digging into this coating on the paper. And it's like etching lines into it so that when you go to erase, even if you erase out the pencil, um, if you try to cover up the, the ink, the divot in the paper remains. And I, I don't want that. So for me, I use the in-between, which is the, the smooth. Um, I'm always prefer that, that surface, but everybody's got their own thing. Uh, pencils. So this is just a pilot uh, point five mechanical pencil with hb lead inside i like it because i don't have to stop to sharpen a pencil i don't have to have um, a special sharpener which you need for this kind of mechanical pencil a lot of people use this this is for drafting um a lot of comic artists like those but you have to have a special um uh, sharpener for it i like this so i can just click click go um and, and keep going um I also have a smaller pencil for finer detail. So this one is 0.3 millimeters as opposed to 0.5. Um, uh, several erasers. I've got your big old white rubber eraser, which is great for erasing everything. And then the other key that I like and use all the time is this is an artist, oops, a needed artist eraser. These are really important when you if you're inking your own pencil work now if i was going to if i have another inker who's working with me as opposed to me inking myself which is what i do i would draw all the pencils as exactly as i wanted it to be so that the inker would know exactly what lines i want them to ink and then whatever they want to add to it but i would not erase a ton of stuff because i'm drawing in pencil if i ink myself I'm going to draw and there's going to be pencil left on the page that I don't want to have scanned into the computer when I'm done. And that's where the needed eraser comes into play. Um, these will help you. This will pull the lead, the graphite off the paper without picking up the ink as well. And so you don't have to typically go in and re-ink areas, um, especially if you're using good, good pens, whether that's um, dip uh, like a nib that you dip in an inkwell and, and do it that way and you've got good ink uh, various uh, felt tip pens like I use or brush pens with good uh, solid ink once it's on and dry you can go in with your artist eraser 
pull up that pencil and um, and not have to worry about it too much. So that's a list of some of the materials um, that I tend to use. And so now let's get to this panel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to reposition this a little bit. And I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer for you on this top panel so that you can see what we're going to be doing. So, um, and this is the one we're going to work on. So I've got, he's landing and there's sort of this, um, I don't know, dust is raising or it's energy or something, you know, you, to help show the impact of him, boom, hitting. Um, but I want to start um, almost always with the head. Um, one of the things about figure drawing, um, whether it's, life drawing or um, like this you know comic book um, you're drawing from fantasy fiction whatever you want to call it um, sports you learn know, this in sports where where the head goes the body goes so it's important to start your head in such a way that it then dictates how the rest of the body moves around now we have some liberties being that this is comic books and so um, science doesn't always apply the same way but it, it it does as well so like by putting his head lower he gives more of a sense of that weight of being dropped down onto the page whereas if i put it up high and he's standing up high then he just sort of went bloop, like a little you know a little hip-hop jump little little <laughs> you know jumping off the curb as opposed to this where his whole body weight is coming down boom onto um the ground so and that tells me so his head is here his neck is here that means that that's the center that would be like the center of his spine and now I can build off of that so this the shoulders are gonna go back he's gonna have shoulder muscle there there's a shoulder muscle here as well and that back's gonna be very rounded now I can um, move the arm forward and you can kind of see I had originally had the arm more straight down, but I decided I wanted to um, have the arm come out more that way. Again, leading your eye more to this um, second panel below. Now, so one, he has a cape. So all this stuff, all this back here behind his head that I just drew isn't going to be seen. I'm going to erase that. You're not going to see, I'm not going to ink these lines because the cape is covering his shoulders and the top of his back. So why would I draw it? Because if I don't draw where the shoulders and the back go, then how do I know where to put this shoulder or where to put this shoulder, right? Maybe I would draw it way out here, which would give him a real weird body shape or this one because now if that shoulder is there and then here's the bicep that connects to that shoulder and then here's the um, the forearm and the fist that's how it all gets built together so if you don't draw this part then the pieces that connect to it could be all wonky and weird and that's where you see sort of broken bodies and this happens a lot with we all I, I say this every video i always use the term young artist young artist does not refer to age it just refers to experience let's put it that way so a young artist or new artist will sometimes draw an arm and a leg and a head and not think about how those are connected especially when they're covered by a costume a cape a building a tree or something and by not drawing through that, you can really end up with some very wonky anatomy. We see that quite a bit. Now, it doesn't, it's not always possible. And, what, and, and you'll see what I'm about to say. So if this is his body, his trunk, and we know that then the rest of him, where's his abdomen? <laughs> like, where's his guts? Where, uh, where is it? Where is all that? So that has to be kind of behind that. 
and that's a little too much like i don't i don't need to draw a complete invisible man we can kind of infer that his hips and things are going to be in this gen he has a belt in this general area and then extrapolate from there a leg will come down now again i'm not trying to draw a photorealistic person landing on a rooftop if i was going to do that i would hire an actor and i would just take a photo what i'm doing is drawing an artistic impression of what a impossible leap off of a giant um, city high-rise building would look like if you were to go ahead and land insanely on one knee which would just destroy your body but it's comics and that's what makes superhero comics so cool is that we can do the impossible so all of he's all crouched over he's bent in half so you're not going to see those abs you're not going to see um, the side the ribs all that stuff is is behind and and going back to these hips and again all of this is stuff that your brain understands when you start to see the overlap of an arm a head what's in front of what and so by doing that we understand that okay this guy's bent over and it and it makes sense we've seen and it doesn't hurt that we've all seen this pose before especially now in you know movies you think about like um right the classic joke in deadpool is the superhero landing but iron man has done it and captain america has done it and spider-man does it and we you know it's part of the language of comics and superheroes so now we're gonna now i'm gonna put in that cape now this obviously is very rough and very scratchy and doesn't have a lot of details and that is okay um, because all I'm doing now is making sure I have the form of the body where I want it to be and the general idea. Like, So now, did I want to make it bigger? Did I want to move this arm up or down? How is this working out? Now, because I have these panels here and I'm going to do a little overlapping, um, this, this sort of um, landing... Uh, crater or whatever you want to call it um, energy the impact I'm trying to sh the visual trying to show the visual of a of an invisible impact right I can't move it a whole lot down further or it's going to start to impact um, below it which I don't want to do I could move him slightly higher in the page but that again takes away from that feel of he's landing and hitting so this to me is right kind of the sweet spot of where i want him to be on the page that works for for me um and then i'm gonna do a little bit of this now and again these are very rough lines and on top of it there's no indication of light or shading or anything like that all i'm trying to do here is again just get the form down and make sure i have the parts where i need them to be which this i'm pretty comfortable this is accomplishing what i want it to be um, if i wanted to i could even which i may we'll see i could, I could do a little of this when we get to the inking these are again part of the the language of comics that shows he's moving in this direction motion lines um we'll see maybe i'll do some of that okay now from here i have a couple of options i could go ahead and start inking i grab a pen and start putting down the permanent lines nothing wrong with that um if in my head I know exactly where the light is, I know how he needs to be shaded, all that kind of stuff, makes perfect sense to do. 
Um, for this, I'm going to show you what I would do from here. Um, so I'm going to work all that out here together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this kneaded eraser and I'm going to very lightly lighten up some of these lines that we've just put down. Now, why would I do that? I like those lines. I've got lines that are going to work for me. Why would I want to erase them? Now, I can still see them. I can still see the outlines. But it's taking away all the extra lines I don't need that were lighter. Um, it's leaving the main outlines. And it's just creating less of a mess for me to work with. So again, I don't have to be particularly... Um, delicate with the line here if I don't want to. Um, I am kind of looking to get sort of a, I think a final, a final line, but we'll see. Um, you know what? So as I was saying, I have smaller pencils. So this one is a little bit small. It's not that small, but that other pencil can go can kind of be broad when it gets dull and I want to make sure that this is um, is good and, and the lines are tight so one of the things about this character is um, his hood or his mask on his face is essentially white or, um, or a very light gray I forget but um, but there's always sort of this shadowed area on the front around the face and that's kind of an homage to sort of um, 80s Batman that had the blue mask it was always blue but the front around his eyes and nose and everything was always black um, regardless of the lighting so there's his where his neck comes down and now we'll do the cape line so I can go back to the other pencil. So you can see now I don't need those lines right there. So where I drew in again that like I was talking about that back and shoulder and and where all that is I don't need to draw that. I have the shape of the muscles here. So what I'm going to do is um, this part the main body of his costume is black. Um, so I'm going to start to shade. So at this point, um, I'm using a general lighting, which means the light is kind of coming this way. So the shadows are going to be on the opposite side of where the light would be. So I'm going to um, do that and kind of add what will eventually get filled in with, um, with ink. Now again, I could do this all in pen. I don't have to do it in pencil first, but it's a good way um, to really visualize what you're trying to, what you're going to see. So you know, all of a sudden you start to go, oh well, let me let me add a little, or let me erase this, or or whatever. As opposed to once you do it, start working in ink, you're kind of committed. There is white out white paint white out but boy it's it's rough um, i have yet to find a really good white out or white paint that will truly cover um that will truly cover good ink good solid black ink um, and either won't be clumpy or it, it'll turn a different color um, usually it'll turn kind of a yellowy and so you see this big chunk of weird color on the page of this yellow so I don't I don't like it that much so I try not to um, not to use a lot of white out if I can help it every so often it happens you're going to um, you're going to make a mistake in ink and rather than go through the whole and redo the whole page it's just a lot easier to 
white it out for sure. Um, of course, with digital, um, there's nothing that says you couldn't leave the mistake as is, and you could um, you could correct it in Photoshop. I've I've done that a couple times as well, um, where it was just a lot easier. Um, but I don't like having those mistakes on the original pages. That's just me. I like I like having the the original page be as it was printed. Now, one of the things I could do here, this for anybody who's not familiar, this is a French curve. This is one of several French curve templates that I have. So these are templates that, let's see if I can find another one real quick. I have a number of them somewhere on my table over here. Here we go. Oh, oh these are, here we go. So it's not a circle template. Come on. All I can grab is circle templates. Okay. So here's another one. I come in a set. So these are curves that aren't a circle, right? So you, you know, you, you, do, uh, this curve is not a circle, obviously. Uh, but I could use my template like this to get a nice clean line that has that gentle curve that I want. Um, same thing here, right? I, I've kind of naturally done it, but you can get it to be clean and straight by using uh, lining it up and using your French curves um, and you just sort of figure out like kind of you know you just sort of line up where you want that cur you know where it matches on the template um, and draw it out so um, typically for me again I'm inking my own work so I wouldn't worry about it too much I would typically um, just wait until I was going to ink it and then get out the get out the template so that my ink lines are nice and straight but just to show you kind of how um, you can utilize the French curve um, I'll end up I'll use it as well for um, this background curvature this sort of oval shape it's not it's not a perfect oval. It's not a perfect circle either. It's something kind of in between. So you get out your your templates, and then it, and then you just have nice clean shapes, clean lines. Um, is just the best way to to kind of handle that. So there we go. So that's how um, French curves, that's how you can utilize those. Um, it took me a long time before I got a set of those. I wish I'd had them a lot earlier. Um, I was like, oh, that's how it works. Like it didn't, it didn't make sense to me how you could um, you know because I was like it, it's just part of a curve like the idea of like tracing a little bit and then moving it and a little bit and a little bit to get the right curve you want didn't kind of click with me for for quite some time but um, now that I do um, have them uh, I like them quite a bit I find them extremely useful I really do like the French curves. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make his hand more forward. be a lot of 
you know, um, a lot of shadow on that, certainly the upper part of this leg because his body is over the top, the cape is over the top. So there's going to be a lot of, there'd be a lot of shadow there. Um, or I guess, so the, the costume is, like I said, the legs, the body, the arms are black. So it's not so much that there'd be shadows as it would be, there'd be fewer highlights, I guess, would be the way, I guess the way I would think about it. So you're not really, if the costume is black, you're not drawing shadows, you're drawing the, the highlights. Does that make sense? So here's one of the things um, that I know I did not pay as much attention to um, when I was younger as I would now. Um, and let me explain that to, to artists, to, to whoever would see this and is looking for this information. So this boot is what they call a, it's been referred to as a buccaneer style boot was very popular in the 70s and 80s comics. Um, you saw them on X-Men and um, Avengers, Captain America, you know, all kinds of people had um, Buccaneer, this Buccaneer boot. It wraps around the form. So if you want this leg to look like it is round, you have to bring this backside all the way up, all the way like that. Otherwise, if you just go like that and draw it flat it just completely flattened out that three-dimensional form so um, if you're if you want to do make it 3d make it give that leg a roundness to it you've got to take this side it's got to go out past the form and around um, Likewise, so you can't, uh, like I said, you can't draw it straight across, and you also can't do this, right? It can't come straight out of the leg. It's a it's a piece of material that's sort of folded down over over the leg. So think about this when you're drawing your things like gloves boots belts anything that sort of wraps around the figure give it space to actually wrap around the figure so this is going to go all the way around and that little subtle difference is going to help give you the illusion that this leg is a round object so I mean, think about like, I don't know if you can see, we have this like little, there's this grip. The grip goes beyond the width of the pencil because it's something that goes over the top. And if you look at it at an angle, it goes out and around and the backside is slightly higher. Um, so again, these are all little subtle things that will help you out. And as you can see, I'm giving myself little guidelines inside the boot of where that leg would be so I know how far to go before I put his ankle in. I don't want to draw an ankle way down here because think of how long that lower leg would be. So even though I'm going to erase these lines, I gave myself those guidelines of where, um, where that would go. So there's that. Again, not so much drawing the shadows in this case as leaving out the highlights on this leg. Now this one's going to have a lot more light hitting it from the top 
So the shading is going to be along the bottom. And this arm again, the shadows or yeah, the highlights will be along the top, the shadow will be along the bottom. And just of course tighten fingers, stuff like that. That's fine. The gloves are white, so there's not gonna be a lot of shading on on those specifically. Um, okay, so it's going to have this little, again, impact mark, if you will, to indicate this is the impact. That'll go around. Now, let me uh, talk real quick about the cape and how I'm going to do this. So this is the top of the cape. Um, it is white. I don't want to do a ton of um, shadows and rendering to it. Um, the light's going to come this way. So if there's if this is a fold, um, I don't have a piece of cloth to show you. But like, so what I'm saying is that by putting these lines here, this is higher and catching the light. This is higher and catching the light. So this is going to be a little, you know, a dip, a valley in in the cloth. So it's going to have a little bit of a shade, a shadow in there, just with some lines. Um, you could go solid black. Um, it just, it doesn't help differentiate that this is white and this is black of the costume if you don't differentiate the shading. So this part I'm going to have be solid, you know, the, sh the shadows, solid black. The shadows on the white part are more line work makes sense so same thing with these two parts so these two parts are actually the underside of the cape it's gone up and folded over itself so these would have to go you know and I'm gonna follow the form of the material of the of the shape and have some big lines like that coming down to that bottom point and sort of the same thing on this side to show to help um, indicate that that's the underside of the cape so those parts would need to be shaded as well but not to the point of completely blacking them out I don't want to I don't want this part to be just completely black either um, so this part is this again just the little impact I can do little like you do little dots like it's dust or dirt that's come up. Um, I could do um, set some areas here, and like I said, if I want, I can indicate with these movement lines or speed lines that he is moving in a downward traje trajectory. I could even come in and do a little on the knee where he's landed to indicate that. Uh, that might be a little much. There we go. And that would essentially be the panel. So we've got um, this is the first part of page two where after page one he is um, he's leaping down 
from a, a skyscraper, from a big building, and boom, he's landing. And you can what from the next pay or the next panel is going to be the character back out. Is the character running along uh, the edge of the building uh, towards the reader, and then leaping from building to building, jumping around, etc. So next step from here would be to begin inking. Um, and there's a couple, uh, real quick, I'll, I'll, I'm going to finish up, give you a couple thoughts, and wrap it up for uh, this video. Um, you, I could ink over this. So real quick, inking materials, I typically tend to use um, Pigram Microns for the basic line work. Um, I like these um, Tombow uh, brush pens, so they have kind of a flexible I say brush pen but it's a you know it's a flexible tip on the pen in kind of different um, firmness uh, for some of the larger lines thicker lines black areas stuff like that um, I could go straight to those tools and begin inking this in and putting in those final lines one of the things you do have to be careful about this isn't too bad if you have a lot of pencil on your paper so let's say what if this figure was the whole page right so lots you know i've got big shaded areas and i've taken my pencil and shaded that in what i find is that the ink sometimes will stick to the graphite from the pencil but won't necessarily go through to the paper so sometimes when you go to erase that's where that ink can come up a little easier or smudge a little easier or whatever as opposed to being on paper. So there's a couple of ways that I could do this inking. Um, and just really, really quick. I could come in with one of these, you know, brush pens that I have. Um, I even have these kinds of brush pens where it's actually like a, has a nylon tip on it for, this is, I use this one for real big, crazy uh, areas that I have to fill in a lot of a lot of um, dark areas. I have some that are much finer tip. So I could come in and begin filling in those black areas with one of these. And again, worry about is the ink going to stick? The other thing I could do, and a lot of people do this, is I could outline the shadow with my with my line art. So let me here. So I could, let's say like this along the arm. So there's his elbow. I can go like this. So I'm at this particular point, I'm, I feel like I'm happy with that shape, right? I like, I like where that's working out, that shape. Now I could outline it like that. Again, let's see. Make sure you can see. So I could outline it. And then the the shorthand for that um, is you put an X. That means fill in that whole shape with black ink. So I could do that, then erase the, the ink, and then come back with one of my larger pens, brush pen or whatever, or, or an actual brush and fill in that area and then that way I don't have to worry about is it going to stick to the the pencil or not so that is typically how I do it um, I like I prefer to outline um, the shadow areas with my line art pen get it that way and then erase all the pencil and and then finish by filling in the dark areas. Then lastly, come in and sort of beef up the lines. If there's an area I need to be a little darker, a little thicker, or whatever the case may be, I, I would do that. So that's how I prefer to do it. And so again, just sort of on the shape of the face, the shadow that exists, I'm going to, I'm gonna make the head a touch smaller. There's a little big in the pencil there.
So that is now going to be filled in black once I erase the pencils. So that is how I um, how I do it, how I tend to ink, um, and what I'll be working on next with this page in this panel. So um, thank you all for checking this out. Um, I know there uh, it was kind of last minute and everybody's enjoying the 4th of July weekend. So anybody who does check this out, either replay or later down the line, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Again, this is um, a page that I showed you from uh, The Just, uh, which is a series that will be coming out uh, later this year. And this is the beginning of page two of the Ash Can that we're going to be um, offering in limited quantities uh, to readers who want to get in a little early and get some of the backstory, some of the development, scare, uh, character sketches, design, stuff like that. Um, if you're a process junkie and you love how comic books are put together and ash can is the perfect thing for you um and so keep an eye out for that we'll have that coming out soon um again uh for anybody who backed m squad on kickstarter thank you again so much for helping me to fund that project we are now in talks with the printer and getting ready to print your copies so we'll be um a couple of months of the printing process but uh, everything looks online to get those out to everybody by the uh, the deadline that we set up in the campaign. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and again, just thanks for so much for checking it out. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Um, if you have the opportunity, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. And uh, for anybody who's watching this currently, it's 4th of July here weekend here in America. Have a happy, safe 4th of July holiday, and uh, we'll be in touch again soon. Thanks.